If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Monday, December 16th, 2013. I'm your host, Tiffany Elias. On today's show, Jeff Cummings interviewed Michael Porapat, who has been announcing meets for USA Swimming since 2001 and announced this past USA Swimming Winter Nationals. Porapat shares some joys and challenges of the job. Let's watch that interview now. So Michael Porapat, how's it been going here at the USA Swimming Nationals doing the announcing? How does it compare to other nationals you've worked at? Well, uh, this is the first short course nationals that I've been a part of, uh, and um, you know, there's there's a lot of similarities. I think um, that not a whole lot jumps out to me as big differences. Uh, I think this is a great platform for uh, post grad swimmers to get a chance to to be in the spotlight. Um, obviously, there's not so many younger kids or collegiate swimmers here. Um, so yeah, it does get a chance for the pros to, to swim short course and to really be featured um, and, and give younger kids a chance that are, are going to make the way to get here to be in a smaller meet with some real high level competitors. Um, and then of course you have you know, a, a few standout college teams that are here that, that brought a big squad. So uh, I think you get a nice uh, slice of, of you know, these different sections of uh, the sport here in age group and collegiate and post-grad. So that's really nice to see. And I, and I think with a, a summer national meet, it can be so large, uh, you know, as it should be, that uh, you don't get to see uh, in more detail sort of each of these elements, you know, that, that compose the, the uh, population of the athletes here. Yeah. Uh, you've been announcing with USA Swimming since 2001, believe Yeah, that's right? correct, yeah. Uh, what got you involved in, in doing this kind of thing? Um, you know, it was uh, just serendipity, really. I, uh, I was always sort of keen on announcers because my, my last name gets fumbled a lot. And, uh, and I always thought that the announcers could do a better job of making swim meets more interesting. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, it's very easy for a swim meet to be dull. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, you know, I was a, a swimmer at Columbia University. I had uh, traveled, I had left school, I had come back, and my eligibility had expired. But I was on very good terms with uh, Coach Bolster there, and he let me continue training with the team. And I said, you know, Jim, let me uh, start announcing some meets at least. You know, I, I'm with the team, I want to race, but I can't, but maybe I can do something in the meets. And so I thought that I could start to make meets more exciting. And I took this approach of really villainizing the, the visiting team <laughs> at Columbia. And I would really mumble over their names. And the Columbia team was good then, but uh, not as good as they are now, you know. And they were kind of battling for fourth or fifth, I think, in the league. And um, so, you know, they get like third. And I just kind of, uh, you know, first from Cornell, you know, 135, 200 free. Uh -huh. Second, you know, Michael Smith. Uh -huh. And in third place. From the Columbia Lions, you know, <laughs> 151. <laughs> and uh, so I had a lot of fun with that. And um, it just so happened that the U.S. Open was out in Long Island in 2001. They did not have an announcer available. They called Jim, who had done uh, announcing at NC2As uh, for several years, and he was unavailable. Mm -hmm. And I literally just happened to drop into his office uh, for no reason when uh, the phone call came and he said, you know, I know someone who can do it for you. And next thing I know, I'm on the pool deck and uh, just trying not to mess up <laughs> and seeing, you know, seeing my idols here, seeing Mao Chow, you know, racing a, a 15 or 16 year old Phelps, you know, it, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell us what the process is like for you as an announcer when you get to a meet. Obviously, you know, you've been doing this for a long time, you know a lot of names, but is there a process that you have when, um, you know, say a final session is about to start? Oh, yeah. Um, well, there's, um, in a meet, it's, it's funny, it really depends on the meet that uh, I'm working. Um, if I need to prepare the, the music for the final session, 
Um, that's sort of my main concentration, making sure I have it, all the playlists prepared, um, and then to review any bio information that I have and to take notes on that and prepare all that. Um, I really wish I, I, it was sort of like uh, high school championships where you have a prelims on one day and finals on the next. Uh, there's so much time to prepare yeah, and review yeah. and get familiar with everything. But, uh, and, and the thing is, is you know, you, you can't prepare until you know who the finalists are. And then you've got this window and you got to pack it all in. So um, it, it depends. But uh, that, that's really what I like to do, um, uh, you know, before actually showing up to the pool. You know, there's a cup of coffee, uh, get my pants on. And we get here, and, uh, and that's, that's pretty much it, you know, <laughs> it's pretty basic, but uh, yeah, reviewing the information, getting as familiar as possible, having as many things lined up just so it can flow as it should, you know, during the final session. I've talked to, to Sam Kendricks, uh, who you've worked with on mm -hmm. many occasions, and, you know, he said one of the toughest parts about being an announcer at, at a lot of meets is getting the crowd involved, getting them excited. Do you find that's really the, the hardest thing is to get the crowd involved? Yeah, and, and I would say that uh, that's the, the most difficult thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I really like working with Sam because uh, I think that is one of his strengths as an announcer. Um, he's very good at getting the crowd going. And, um, and so I can kind of let him do that, you know, and I can be more the straight guy in the competition and um but yeah you know it's it's something that uh I, i'm still trying to find how to make that work in the best way and and how to interact with the crowd without being intrusive yeah you know um because it, I, I don't want it to be about me you know um it, it has to be about the athletes all the time and and to, to use myself to bring the crowd to the athletes um, it's, it's a fine line, you know, to make sure that I don't step into the spotlight. Right. Uh, I was there in Barcelona when you were working um, at the World Championships. It must have been a thrill for you to be able to call those world records that, that were going on. It was amazing. Yeah, it really was. My, my first long course world champs, um, just being there, you know, the atmosphere, the, the gravity of the meat, you know, everything's so heavy. and. Um, it, yeah, it's just a, a whole different uh, stage and level of competition, and uh, yeah, it was really, really exciting, um, you know, and, and it's, uh, you, you have to really keep a cap on it, you know, I mean, I, I don't think Fina really wants someone, you know, exploding with energy and all sorts of voice inflection, you know, during a race, um, it, it is a more formal atmosphere, I think, um, at least that's my interpretation of a, of a meet like that, and um, so to, to to push the bar without, again, you know, jumping over the line of it being about me um, was difficult to, to kind of hold back, you know, when you're seeing these swims that you know it's going to be a world record, the way that Katie was swimming, you know, out of control there. Um, but it, yeah, it was a lot, a lot of fun and I was, I was very, very glad to be a part of it. Do you know what lies in the future in terms of meets you're going to be announcing? Um, just for this year, I'll be at the... Uh, some of the Grand Prix meets, I'll be in Orlando and Mesa, and then um, the Summer Junior Nationals, and uh, I think we're, we're still talking about maybe using me on, on the pool deck for the game day desk for uh, the, uh, the selection meet for the Nationals. And, uh, but other than that, you know, it's year by year, and, and, and that's tricky, you know, it's freelance, so I don't know, you know, and, and I'd like to think that I, I kind of have a, a, a foot in the door, you know, or yeah. more than a foot now, but uh, <laughs> Um, you never know, and that's the thing, is, is uh, I have to treat it like every meet is the one opportunity I'm going to get to go to another meet. Mm -hmm. so. Who knows, you may, be, uh, you may be the PA announcer if the, ever the Olympics come to the uh, United States, and I guess they're trying for 2024. Yeah, that would, that would really be a thrill. And, uh, you know, I mean, they, they're going to need an English voice in Rio. And, that's true. Um, you know, uh, uh, my mother's Brazilian, so that would mean a ton to me uh, to be able to uh, represent, you know, not only my family but the United States, uh, going back to, you know, the mother country. 
would, would really just be amazing. And I'm almost afraid of that because it's, it's like, and then what? You know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's almost like peaking here too early. So we'll, we'll see, though. Well, I'll see if you're watching. Oral Pat has a connection. He's Brazilian. It would just be a great story to have a Brazilian um, English announcer there. So, you know, maybe we'll get the gears going and have that happen for you. That'd be amazing, Jeff. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so this isn't, you know, obviously it's a fun gig, but it's not your full-time job. You you also work with Imagine Swimming that's based out of New York City. But Correct. Um, as you just told me before we started, you actually live in California. So how do you work with them being on the other side of the coast? Um, you know, I've, I've been sort of uh, tethered to California you know I grew up there and, and swam there and, and left to go to school in New York and um, always wanted to return home always wanted to raise a family there and um, so it was a matter of just kind of making that happen and, I, and I've been so thankful for Imagine and uh, for Lars and Casey to be supportive of that and to provide that opportunity for me and we did have to ease into it you know because one of the main things about Imagine is, is everyone there teaches lessons mm -hmm. and obviously I can't teach lessons you know and so uh, for them to kind of make this ex exception and um, you know I, I, I am do spend a good amount of time in New York and, and try to get in some lessons when I am there but uh, it uh, it's a bit of a challenge you know I'm, I'm and uh, yeah it's you know just day by day and I got to make sure I have internet and and that's that's the main thing, really. Yeah, it's great that you're in the 21st century doing this telecommuting yeah. thing. Right. Obviously, uh, I don't think this could have happened, you know, in uh, the, the generations before us. And so, yeah, again, it's, it's something I'm very thankful for. And you know, where I live, uh, I, I am very remote. Um, there's no cable out there. Um, I have to pick up a, uh, a signal from a dish that's a few miles away, and uh, actually had to erect like a 60-foot pole on my property to get internet. So. <laughs> It's quite of a mission. That is amazing. Well, it's amazing. They imagine must really want you, if they, or you must really <laughs> want to work with Imagine to make all of this happen. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a phenomenal company. It really is. Um, you know, and, and as we we sort of grow and, and evolve, you know, and, and keeping sort of the core message of a love of the water and letting kids, you know, uh, expand on their own pace. Uh, it, it's been really great to be a part of and. and Hopefully, you know, we, we go on forever. Yeah, well, that's that's the goal, isn't it? It's always yeah. the goal. Uh, well, Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Before we go, because this interview is part of the Morning Swim Show, we're going to submit you to our final five here. These are five questions we ask all of our guests. So, all right. Um, first question, since you were a swimmer and you still swim, splash around a little bit, um, if you could change the order of strokes what in the individual medley, what would be your preferred order? Uh, let's see. I, I think I, I might keep it the way it is. Um, I, I'm a breaststroker and a freestyler, and I am really bad at backstroke. And I love to race from behind. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was not a great IMer, but I had some good races where I was way back after the fly and the back, and then almost you know negative split the 200 IM. It was just a terrible backstroke I had and would come back on people on the freestyle, uh, especially long course. Uh, the 400 IM, the 200 IM was a lot of fun long course um, where you had the whole pool mapped out. And, All right, I'm going to get this guy now. Because I, I really, in, in still calling the, the IMs, I'm always looking at the breaststrokers. Mm -hmm. You know, and they, I feel like they have an advantage. There is an advantage, I will say. As a breaststroker, I agree with you. It's fun to come from behind. <laughs> yeah. um, Besides the, the jobs that you currently have, what's a career or job you think you would like to have? Um, I, you know, I, w I would like to spend some more time acting. I got into theater a bit at Columbia, and uh, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. And uh, I think, you know, that's the, the great thing about, about you know, film and, and theater is that, you know, you need people of all ages, shapes, sizes, you know, to, to play different roles. Mm -hmm. So there, there's no reason why I, I can't be, you know, an old man and, and start a, uh, a pairing and some kind of acting. Well, with all the voice work you're doing for USA Swimming as an announcer, maybe you could be like in you know, part of an animated show or something like that. That would be a lot of fun. A yeah. little more money for your voice. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on the flip side of that, what's a job you think you would not like to try? Um, hmm. Let's see. Uh, I, I don't mind manual labor. You know, I, I live kind of on a ranch, so I do a lot of uh, dirty work there. Um, hmm. 
Gee, something where I'm kind of uh, would not have much control, I guess. Uh, what kind of job would that be? Uh, you know, you know what I, I really wouldn't like to be is a police officer, I guess. Yeah, you know, I don't want to bust anyone. I don't, I don't want to come down on anyone. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> or, or you know, get in the line of fire. Either, yeah, so. yeah, those are dangerous jobs to have. Um, what's a rule that you would like to change or add in the swimming swimming rule book? Um, I, I think. I would remove the dolphin kit from breaststroke um, and make it a little more easy to officiate, mm -hmm. I think. Um, if you were to just take that away, it'd be a little simpler, I guess. Uh, yeah, so I, th I think I'd go with that. Okay. Uh, as fun as it is, I mean, I used to get DQ'd for a dolphin kick on breaststroke, uh, so I was excited when it came out, but then, uh, you know, of course, you know, with uh, the Olympics and uh, I'm blanking on his name now. The, Vanderbilt. The, the, right. Uh, uh, you know, and all that controversy. Uh, I think if there just wasn't any dolphin kicks allowed, it'd be a little cleaner. Okay. Um, last question. Where do you like to go for vacation? Uh, anywhere tropical, anywhere with warm water. My absolute favorite thing to do is body surf and uh, free diving. Um, so anywhere where it's warm enough to do that and just get in and see some fish and some, some coral, uh, that's that's the top of the list. And so, uh, you know, I absolutely love Hawaii. That's That's an amazing place probably be there, the big island. Well, if you get the gig to be the English announcer at the Olympics, I heard the, the waters around Rio are nice and warm. And yeah, that's true. Perfect for body surfing and everything imaginable. That's right, maybe get a one-way <laughs> ticket. <laughs> one-way ticket. Okay, maybe not IOC. We <laughs> want to have them back in the USA. Mike, thanks so much for joining us, and uh, we enjoy all the work you do for USA Swimming and FINA, and um, looking forward to hearing your voice over the, the air again. Thanks a lot, Jeff. My pleasure. All right. Jeff, thank you, and Michael, thanks for everything you do for the sport. That is it for today's Morning Swim Show. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.